How's it going everyone? Adam here. Now, today, the Night of the Doctor episode came out, and I just had to sit here and express how awesome it was to see Paul McGann back as a Doctor. I know some people may think that I hated the 1996 movie, but I actually liked it. The Everything Wrong With the Doctor Who movie was just fun and boredom, really. It really doesn't show my true opinion on the movie, but that doesn't matter. The things that happened in this, the things, the bridge between the classics and the reboot in 2005 has pretty much just been filled. And it's so good. So we're just going we're gonna to go through some stills because this, I absolutely loved this, The Night of the Doctor. I've watched it about 17 times already and I just keep going back and watching it. So we start off with the... Well, another lady Cass on a gunship that's crashing into Khan. Khan, for those of you who don't know, has been in Doctor Who before and has been in the Tom Baker episodes, The Brain of Morbius. Good episodes, actually. Really, really good. Which is also where we find out the uh, Doctor's other secrets to his... To his uh, well, it, uh, William Hartnell isn't the first Doctor. Or the first incarnation, but we'll go more into that after this video. Yeah, Paul McGann appears. Now, people thought it was going to be John Hurt already and just all David Tennant on Matt Smith, but no. Paul McGann has to go and surprise everyone. Now, as much as sometimes I've hated Stephen Moffat's writing, this story was spot on for Paul McGann. It was absolutely brilliant. The fact that it just goes back to the normal Doctor way of meets someone on a crashing ship and wisps them away. Instead it not working. Now, we look at the TARDIS here and it looks very roughed up. It's David and Chris's TARDIS look, or at least the outside look, for sure, but it looks a lot more roughed up. So obviously, Paul McGann's Doctor has been travelling for a bit. He didn't. He's not just a one trick pony he's just he's a he's been around for a bit it's quite obvious I'm going to try and lower the webcam a bit because I look like a floating head and it's really awkward but yeah Cass finds out he's a time lord and obviously you can tell this is a time war because she is terrified of this you know the fact that the doctor was going to die with her she delighted in it and it was brilliant you know, as much as he still wanted to save her, she wanted him to die. That, that, she brought that out perfectly. Just look along, the sisterhood of Khan. Now, Paul McGann actually, before his doctor was dead, if we look that up, he died. And as, as they said, they brought him back to life for a little over four minutes. And they gave him the choice of taking the elixir of life. Basically, eternal life. And they said something about Time Lord science is escalated on Khan. I probably didn't get that right, but... It's still a good concept that these... They are seem to be beyond the Time Lords. You know, they can live forever when a Time Lord only has so long and so many bodies. If we look down, we've got Paul McGann, and he goes through that whole thing of just like four minutes, oh, that's boring, blah, 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 television, knitting, etc. And that's spot on brilliant. Now down here we see the elixirs of life. Same goblets actually used in the Brain of Morpheus episodes. Looks exactly like them. The uh, Eternal Flame, as they called it. Just look down at these pictures and it's just, this is brilliance. You know, Cass is dead. The Doctor is still technically breathing. And then he takes her, well, some sort of sash thing, I think it's called. You know, and he pretty much just says he wants to turn into a warrior. The Doctor is not needed anymore. You know, this is... Paul McGann 
this doctor making the decision to fight in the time war uh now if we just look quickly i'm gonna find a picture of john hurt's doctor now if we just look on his costume i'm gonna attempt to zoom this in an older john hurt he still has the war warrior sash i'm just gonna call it the warrior sash so you know it's definitely an older doctor because as, as we see at the end of this they use a younger version of john hurt when they look into the mirror you know john hurt's not not a, a young man anymore he's god he's he's got to be coming up to possibly 80s at least he looks he's still acting though which is pretty damn good and then the whole regeneration felt so shakespearean kind of i don't know if people catch that but you know he sort of looks at the goblet he's you know he says a load of names i but not i really didn't understand it's like carly something 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 molly forgive me and then you know looks at it again Physician, heal thyself. Sure, that's, that's part of sort of confused me because that's where he starts getting all Shakespearean, and then the finally, well, finally we get the regeneration of Paul McGann. Long needed. Okay, he's whew, seventeen years a bit too late for his regeneration, but you know. It's better late than never. Then the bridge is made, and we just see the whole scene of the uh, well, O'Hill, O'Hill guy. I think they said the name was. And then we get him, younger John Hurt, and obviously in this again. This this version of John Hurt, he's been travelling for a while. You know, this is him how he looks in the 50th and the trailers and this is him right at the very beginning so this this doctor has lasted for a while or as he's not called now he's called the war doctor which would make what it says at the end of the name of the doctor invalid now in the name of the doctor he was just called introducing john her as the doctor at the end of this it said introducing john her as the war doctor so Maybe some alterations need to be made to the end of the name of the doctor scene now. Uh, it would it'll be okay. I mean, I reckon it'd still be fine, but you know. Yeah, this. Oh, I think I've just gone and deleted it. Go back. There, uh, see? It's a whack, it's a whack. But yeah, this doctor has been traveling for a while. You know, he's he's not just regenerated into an old man. He's travelled, and I mean, using a picture of John Hurt like that from ages ago is brilliant. And then we've go back up again. He's got the pictures of him putting the sash on again, and which he's obviously kept because maybe Cass had some sort of impact on him, or a massive impact. I mean, well, apart from the fact uh, they impacted onto a planet, aka Khan. You know, the death of her convinced the doctor he needed to change because Paul McGann's doctor was no fighter. You know, the doctor is not a fighter. He is a, well, good man to help. When the doctor is in a time of need and doesn't want to fight, he has to become something more, which is why I reckon they call him the war doctor. Still elements of the doctor in him. But really only there to fight the war. As we all know, it's the time war. And that that really just gets me and just really pushes this story along because this story was possibly one of the best that I think Stephen Moffat's written in a long while. But yeah, also now we're gonna move on to the um the other thing I was talking about of uh, Tom Baker in the Brain of Morpheus, I said earlier that William Hartnell's Doctor was not the first. Not long back, Stephen Moffat said, "You've all missed something." You know, 
the Doctor's regeneration. We've all missed something. And you know what? He said we need to go back and rewatch all of it. Tom Baker's episodes, the four part episode, The Brain of Morpheus, has, well, Morpheus, if you don't know, is a Time Lord that was destroyed, but the brain of Morpheus is, well, survived, and a man called Solemn basically put him back together in a new body and reactivated him. And the Doctor and Mor Morbius had a sort of mind battle where we actually saw it pretty much went along the line of Tom Baker is like there's a picture of him and then it goes and shows John Pertwee then it shows Patrick Troughton then it shows William Hartnell and then there are these eight more faces that we've never seen and those are the previous versions of the Doctor I think I've actually got the picture of the technical first doctor ignore my skype yeah a picture of the first original doctor uh, as long as i can find it and as long as it will work it's not working okay let's just add the picture your file on my desktop just have to find it eventually eventually where is it? Here it is. This picture. I'm going to cover the whole thing. There we go. This is Morbius over here. The, well, the guy on the left. And that's obviously Tom Baker, as you all know. And this in the middle is the original face of what I believe is the Doctor. Or, to put it another way, William Hartnell is the first Doctor. But we all know the Doctor is not his name. He has a name. And as uh, in the Fires of Pompeii put it, it burns in the cascade of Medusa herself. His real name doesn't matter. The name he chose is the Doctor. But yeah, I believe that this person in the middle is the original face of the Doctor. This is obviously taking a picture on a program I use called Gaiazu. And it's on Daily Motion, the Brain of Morpheus. Yeah, I'll let people think over that. Because it's it's a difficult difficult thing to come to terms with that William Hartnell is the first Doctor, but not the first incarnation of whoever the Doctor's real name is. You know, and we might get some more hints about that after the 50th, you know, in Peter Capaldi's episodes. But that, if if this is the original Doctor, that would make Tom Baker, if we do the math, technically the 12th Doctor. Because there would have been the eight faces that came before, William Hartnell being nine, uh, uh, Patrick Troughton being ten, John Pertwee being eleven, and that would make Tom Baker 12 at the time. And then Peter Davison, Colin Baker, all the rest, blah, blah, blah. Which would, actually, if you're thinking about it, would make David Tennant the... Oof, libbity wobbity wimey wimey 18th Doctor, or 18th incarnation of the original body. And that would make uh, Matt Smith the 19th, and so on, Peter Capaldi being the 20th incarnation. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave... Leave you to think over that. It's, it's a lot of information to take in one video. But yeah, uh, might do some more videos on this topic because it's quite an interesting one. And we've got only nine days, or coming up to technically eight days in, a, in two hours, or eight, almost eight days left until the 50th. Yeah, I'll let you think over that, and I'll see you next time.